Right, so as you can see by that little cog going around, it's a new solar tracker, very tall geared, so it takes a while for it to do anything. And I think my camera is starting to uh, steam up because it's cold. Sorry about that, it will dry up in a bit. Um, I can still see that cog going around. The two little panels sticking out the front act as shields to cause the, to one of the other of the solar panels angled at the back to be shaded when the sun moves. That helps accuracy. But if the sun goes down in the evening and comes up in the morning, or if it goes in and comes out in a completely different part of the sky, the two front solar panels will catch it side on and increase the efficiency of it winding around. I think the transit time is about 15 minutes. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, it should stop any moment now. It's just stopping now. And it'll be interesting to see, once it has stopped, how long it takes. Yeah, it's just stopped now. It'll be interesting to see how long it takes before it starts up again. But you see, there's no main solar panel on this one, unlike my last one. It's only the actual tracker. The actual main solar panel would be across the back like that and obviously but obviously for the sake of simplicity I've just uh, kept it as a simple solar tracker the circuits very easy the two solar panels sets of panels on either side are wired back to back so it's uh, positive to negative negative to positive and the motor is wired between the two so when the sun shines on the panels one side it turns one direction when the sun shines on the panels the other side it turns the other direction and when the sun's in the middle, the panels cancel each other out and stops. Um, the two side panels are wired in parallel, i.e. red to red, black to black, and same on the other side are wired, red to red, black to black. And then the two sets of panels either side are wired, black to red, red to black. So they're actually opposite, and then the motor's wired between the two. And if you build one and you find it keeps turning out away from the sun rather than towards it, simply reverse the wires to the motor or reverse the gearing either either will do um, if the uh, you could build a bigger one by using that motor to switch switches and that causes a main panel with the little sensor panels attached to it a main panel mechanism you know the actual tracking frame to swing round I suspect you could use a lazy Susan to uh, as a bearing an outdoor lazy Susan as a bearing and you could rig something up like that because those things are quite strong. Um, you'd have a scaffold pole up the middle with a loose bearing at the top that gives you strength. The scaffold pole doesn't have to turn, it can be solid in the ground and then the weight of the panel simply bears down on the lazy Susan at the sliding scaffold clamp at the top letting it move on the pole. You know, a sliding sleeve, it could be a scaffold clamp slightly loose and lock nutted and then some kind of bigger motor arrangement controlled by this to switch switches. And uh, if the panel's a few degrees off, that doesn't matter because the sun still basically sees it square on. Um, it's only when it's off by any significant amount you start losing output. So uh, if you want absolute maximum efficiency from your solar panels, trackers are worth considering. A similar set of sensor panels like there, but arranged sideways could be used for up and down tracking. Um, but there's nothing to stop you just resetting the panel occasionally throughout the season if it's easy to get at. Um, if you want maximum power, if you're running an appliance that needs to be run all year round, yeah it's off again, there it goes. Um, set the panel fairly vertical to catch the most sun in the winter because in the summer you'll have more than enough sun to power your appliance if, it's, if the batteries are sized to, the panels are sized to keep it going in the winter. Um, if on the other hand you want maximum power, say during the summer, you set the panel towards the optimum summer position. Uh, it, it depends. Um, that is, say, if you're powering something all the year round, like a street sign, and you need your panel still fairly vertical because you want to catch the low winter sun uh, as much as possible. Um, and of course, during the summer, there's more than enough sun to keep it charged. So, uh, for maximum all year round performance, you'd have the panel stood almost vertical. And then this tracker would basically follow the sun around the horizon. There, off it gets just started up again.
Let's just creep around slowly. In fact, you've got one gearbox there, driven by worm gear. There's the motor, drives a worm gear underneath that turns that little cog you see there. That drives a few more cogs on the side of that gearbox. That drives another worm gear that's across that way that then drives another gearbox to, to move the tracker. So it's very tall gear. I think the transit time might e is about uh, 15, 20 minutes. Now if the sun came up from that way and the thing is pointed right over the other direction, it'll take around 15, 20 minutes to wind its way around. But yeah, have you seen it move again? Um, it can't be helped that these videos are very boring because what we're basically wait, wait, waiting for is the sun to move and the sun takes its time. So, yeah, nonetheless, there's the mechanism. It's right in front of you and it's quite happily doing its little thing. It's quite fun to have a mechanism with a faster transit time on, say, the top of a narrow boat. And so when, uh, when you're driving the narrow boat along the river, as you move to drive the boat around all the bends, of course, the tracker whizzes backwards and forwards, so your panel is still following the sun. It's quite, quite, uh, quite fun to watch. Normally, solar panels are quite boring. They just sit there. It's wind turbines whiz around and round and round, but solar panels just sort of sit there. Um, at least having a tracker on it means that the panel has some movement to it as well. And given that we always have tracking on wind turbines with a tail and a, an arm, it seems almost seems silly not to have them on solar panels, especially when it can be done so simply like this. This is a, a very simple arrangement. There's no electronics involved. It's literally just the two sets of solar panels and the motor. And in fact, if the sun came up in the morning and it was pointing towards evening, the sun would come in from the back. So you'd almost need another panel on the back connected to the ones that swing it back towards the morning sun. <coughs> Excuse me, just to tell the motor the sun is there, or you could sort of rearrange those a bit differently. I'd say it's out of experimentation. It's dead easy. That there's yeah, there's it's moving again, and you see that those wires there. That's the circuit. There's no more electronics. It's literally the solar panel straight into the motor. It started moving again. Camera will time out after about two and a half minutes. It runs for ten minutes. So basically, what you've got here is 10 minutes of the solar tracker tracking and me nattering on about it. It's made of Fisher Technic, which is a, the best known Lego ever known to man. Now you can basically describe Fisher Technic as German Lego, but that's a bit like describing Concord as a rather fast aeroplane. Uh, Fisher Technic is terrific stuff. They've got computer control modules and all sorts of things. If you look at some of my other videos or simply Google six speed gearbox, you'll find ones made of Fisher Technic that I've put on uh, YouTube. Me and my son are heavily into it. I grew up with it in the 1970s and my son is now uh, growing up with it so uh, he and we both sort of got engineers, careers in engineering so yeah it's good stuff. Um, they, uh, they got structures and pneumatics and hydraulic, well pneumatics and computer controlled and sensors and valves and all sorts of stuff with it. Um, that's red and grey Fisher Technic, that was all made in the 1970s, except for that motor which I glued on in place of the normal Fisher Technic motor. And uh, so it's got a proper Fisher Technic worm gear on it, which I pulled off a, a normal Fisher Technic motor because I needed to use the motor in my six-speed gearbox project driving a spur gear instead so it would run faster. Um, so that worm gear is now on this, on the solar tracker. I put a piece of... Uh, that's a cheap solar motor kit off eBay. I put a small piece of wire insulation over the shaft to make it diameter bigger. And then I pushed the uh, Fisher Technic cog over the larger diameter wire insulation. And that gave me enough uh, diameter to squeeze the Fisher Technic gear on. Obviously make sure everything turns smoothly. And then a tip. I've got loads of those gear boxes. So I super glued the solar motor onto the back of it because I've got dozens of them and uh, I hardly ever use them for anything else so uh, I've actually sacrificed two not one like this and another one like it for uh, another solar motor I bought two of those cheap solar sets and I've now converted them to Fisher Technic gear drives and uh, I can do stuff like this and the uh, they're well trusted with it actually it's just literally just a cheap solar motor set two, two solar panels they wire them, they tell you how to wire them in series for more speed, or while there it goes off it goes again, or you wire them and